So I'm guessing we're live, but Patrick doesn't seem to be telling me that. You couldn't hear my mic? No, oh, I didn't hear I'm any sorry. of that. You were just silent as you transitioned, so I'm, thanks. I'm sorry. I was doing push to talk and it doesn't work when the monitor's open. It's like, oh god. Uh, so dear, can, wonderful. Uh, yeah, whenever you're ready, just do the introduce to the camera. Right, okay. Um, what, I do the countdown? Yeah. Okay, uh, A17, when you're ready, after five, we will go on, start on the run. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> welcome everybody to I Wanna Call Me It. Uh, I'm currently watching on the DLC player, so I may be a little bit behind what you see on stream, but we'll see what happens. So, the first few screens is just the intro. This is the first stage that we have here. It's a bit of a trap stage. There's lightning that spawns randomly throughout the area, and you just kind of hope that it doesn't spawn near you. I'm a little cry. Good. Yeah, sound balance is a little hard to deal with. The run for this is A17 Devil. Uh, I'll see if I can turn myself up a little bit. And see if I can fix this. So it's a little difficult. Sound balance is a bit, has been a bit of a problem for this. So hopefully this is better. Feel free to let me know. Oh, that's a terrible record. Yeah, oh, man. man. So yeah, the aim, for this, the, the aim for this stage is just getting through, avoiding the traps, remembering the order of everything. Um, the game sound is quite loud in the first stage compared to the other one, so hopefully it'll turn itself down a little bit in stage two. So far this seems like a pretty decent stage one, although he has gotten screwed a little bit for some of the lightning bolt placements. That one was very close. It's a very short stage for the first stage, but you do have to hope that the lightning bolts aren't in bad places. Oh yeah, A17 has cleared a lot of fan gains. Ah, nice trick there. So yeah, there's two ways of going around that trigger on the far left. You can either full speed all the way past it, or trigger it and jump back to the right. And now on to stage two. So this is a well-known song called Flower by DJ Yoshitaka, I think? Yeah, I'm not the one capturing, I'm afraid, or broadcasting. So I'm not really sure on how to best help things, but hopefully it's better. That captures off a little bit, really. Uh, Pass, I think that one's on your end. So it's okay on VLC. So yeah, the way that this stage works is that you go back and forth from one side to the other, and then more spikes and saves get added each time. Exactly. Cool. Hey. Hey. I will admit I haven't prepared the commentary too much. I kind of got brought in last moment. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer as well as I can. So yeah, there are a few tricks that you can do for some of this stage, but for the most part, it's just basic platforming stuff, like line up with this block to try to get through this gap. You can drop all the way down for most of that one, and there are certain things that you can just go for it, but for the most part it's just basic platforming as it, as it were, so diagonal jump, gate jump, try to jump at the right time, hug a wall to get through things. These were not the questions I was expecting when I asked this, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Twitch chat is Twitch chat. You can skip the save, but it's honestly not really worth it. But it is a bit of an awkward save to deal with in the top middle. Oh, he's skipping that one, okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. This save here is probably the most awkward one, because you yeah, you got to double jump really fast on the far right side. The first drop there, you can just tug against the wall. It's a little far away, so you don't actually realise that at first. And I can hear myself through the player, so I can tell how far behind I am. So I'm afraid I can't really do too much about that. It's just the way of things. So when he gets past this diagonal in the top middle, you can actually just drop all the way down if you hug the walls right. Yeah, nice. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm really far behind. There's not too much I can do about it. I'm trying to watch the the, uh, the VLC player, but this is pretty much like bootstraps in Enjoy the Excursion. But yeah, that's the first part of, phase, of stage two done. So the screen flipped once, and now it's actually going to start turning on its side after this next transition. So it changes 90 degrees instead. now I think about it. I never really I don't really think too much about this stage when I'm, whenever I'm platforming through it I just kind of play the game so yeah this is actually a new screen from the previous one for some reason I didn't really think it through too much but now it changes 90 degrees every time so the first half is just adding spikes on each time and then it flips it at uh, 180 yeah you can just hold left for that long drop for the flip and then yeah on this path it's just it changes 90 degrees every time you go for it for the most part, again, you don't want to skip saves because it's generally not worth it. But you definitely can do it in a couple of cases and it would save you a couple of seconds. Uh, for this next, this last save, you can try to get a wall to make a walk off for this T-bone thing. But otherwise you just jump forward if you don't have the right wall. Oh. Or you can jump cancel, that works too. And if you're really fast with stage 2, you can actually get to the end before the music restarts. But now on to stage 3. The way this stage works is that you touch a grey line, it turns into a white line. Uh, the white lines will kill the player. And once all the grey lines have turned into white, then the red line will disappear and you can carry on to the next screen. The first few screens of the stage are pretty much just basic tutorials. And then you get into something a bit more serious like screen 3 here. There's a couple of tricks for the thing in the bottom right section. One way is that you can try to drop straight onto it and then double jump to the left. And the other way is that you can just do it entirely differently to how I'm the way of doing it. Alright then. Didn't think about that, chat. That's interesting. Huh. The way I do that is going to the left side first, then back to the right. But that's pretty good. However, this one's a bit more straightforward. It's pretty much just looking around the screen. If you want to try going to the top left instead of the top right first, then you can. But you're not going to be able to get to the end, so there's no way back up. So, you've pretty much got to go top left and go around in a circle. Yeah, I ran the same last year. My first attempt at it uh, horribly, horribly disconnected thanks to my internet. The second run actually finished it. So again, there's a few ways through this stage. This way is very, very different to the way I do this. I normally go around and anti-clockwise. So this is very interesting for me to see. I have actually not seen that move before. That's kind of interesting. Okay, huh. Cool. And this screen is again a bit more of a choosy route thing. The, mo the main thing that uh, it really varies is generally the top left section when you're trying to do the left half of the screen. The right hand half tends to be the same for pretty much every player. But then the rest here you can kind of choose on which way round you want to do it. Like the line at the top left you could drop through if you wanted to and then go round a different way. But the, this screen is very different depending on the player. Everyone kind of has their own route for this. The A17 seems to be following the route that I pretty much do myself. And now we've changed it. Okay, there you go. So yeah, there's so many ways of doing this screen, but it's also kind of one of the biggest pains in the arse for people that haven't got much experience. Because it's very easy to die on this and it takes ages to get through it again. Yeah, thankfully you first tried it, so that's actually really good. Because that is definitely one of the screens that can cause some issues. And this is the last screen of stage 3. And we'll get on to the first boss. The first boss being a bit different to the majority of bosses that you see in R&B by fan games. It's kind of an avoidance, but it also kind of isn't. If you remember seeing the final boss of I Want a Classic, it's sort of like that in a sense. It's kind of platforming based. But you'll see in a moment. For the most part, I'll let it speak for itself. Because this song is good, it's so good.
So the screen's gonna move over to a, a room in a moment, and that section is entirely passing. And then you do have to kind of hope a little bit that the orbs, when you're going to the right, don't mess you up. But for the most part, this fight overall is actually pretty reasonable. The only hard part is generally at the end. Specifically, when there's some bouncing orbs that spawn on screen when you enter another room. While there's serving stuff going on at the same time. Though if you're lucky, some of the orbs, the bouncing orbs, can actually leave the room at the bottom left the way you enter it. Nice, that's pretty decent power to do there. So yeah, this is the room that can cause issues on the second half, this last part. And then we'll move on to stage 4 after boss 1. Which is a Gyrox stage, because everybody knows you need a Gyrox stage in the game. Uh, uh, by the way, if anybody here is spooked easily, I recommend muting the stream now. It's a very, very spooky stage as well, having Gyrock. Uh, fun fact, there's a corner in the bottom left that we passed by before the last save. If you enter that save, uh, enter the corner, and then go down, the screen will just post a bunch of ah symbols in Japanese and then alt F4 itself. It's kind of wonderful. Right, you got to be aware of some of these blocks because there's basically it's more traps going on everywhere again. If you go far, yeah, good, he didn't skip there. If you go fast, you can skip the trigger going past, because normally in casual play, you jump back to the left. And this stage is pretty much also already over, because it's a very short stage. And then we'll be on to boss 2, which is kind of one of the big run killers. In a sense, because it's a 3 in the half minute avoidance. And there's some RNG midway through that can cause you a lot of trouble. Granted, if you really want a good run of this game, you do, you do need to first try pretty much every boss. So yeah, there's a lot of this fight that's pattern. There's quite a few things that aren't too hard to read and deal with. There's a few very... Oh, that's a nice trap. There's a few very specific sections that can cause issues. The giant burst at the end of this can also be one. Uh, I probably should have said epilepsy warning as well a little bit because there is a lot of flashing going on in this fight. Because that won't be the last time. That's actually more reasonable than some of the flashing later. So if you do have trouble seeing flashing, then feel free to look away in a bit here. with some blue fruit. I may be a little late on saying that, it seems that <laughs> I'm trying to predict the delay here. So you can get a bit unlucky with some of these red fruits spraying out when we're in here, but normally they tend to be okay when they get sucked into the middle. And then the last little bit of RNG is when these four shapes uh, fall downwards, although it's normally pretty reasonable to deal with as well. And then everything afterwards is entirely passing. Ooh! Ooh! Ah! Yeah, those first two shapes were nasty. I think there was a way to get through that between the second and third one that he held left, but either way, that was pretty rough. And that's what I mean about there sometimes being some nasty RNG in this fight. But yeah, after that set of those fruit falling down had gone away, the rest of the fight would be entirely captain. And 
technically you should never die from that point. But like, obviously sometimes you do mess up and it can happen. the rest of the fight goes pretty alright, because his first attempt was pretty good. It got very, very close to the end. And the song is really good, I do agree. If you watch the music video of this fight, there's actually some parts of it that syncs up really well with that. It's actually quite cool to see. on the multicolor fruits here, hopefully the yellow falling fruits are okay as well. The three can catch you off guard sometimes. And the final part is going to be the red fruit and then the falling shapes. Again, red fruit are generally fine, so it's not much of a problem, although you can panic a little bit sometimes with the curling. incredibly nice compared to last time. So that's pretty much the two extremes you can see there for the RNG at the end. So the black circle here is fine, then you get a bit of a pause, and then you get the final 30 seconds of pattern. So there's quite a few ways you can actually get through the end section. But, like, normally I actually can't remember my route through it, so I pretty much just react to it for the most part. The first 10 to 15 seconds are pretty alright, but then the last 15 seconds I just completely forget every time. But everyone pretty much has their own strap for this stuff. Overall, it's actually pretty reasonable to deal with on a consistent basis. As long as you can get to this part, you should pretty much deal with it every time the speedrun. Ah, huh. that's different from mine, yeah. And GG, that's the second boss clear. So, one stage and one boss to go. So just because the second boss is down doesn't mean uh, speedrun is home free on this because boss 3 can still be a bit of a problem as well. But before that you got this final stage, stage 5, which is pretty cool, honestly. I don't think there's going to be too much I can really say about this stage before he's already passed by the saves, because they all tend to go by pretty quickly. Because overall the platforming this stage isn't too bad. Like, there's some moving diagonals here, you know, you time them like diagonals. first round the corner. This save is just solely a bunch of 16 pixels for some reason. I don't know why, but it is what it is. The row along the top, the hard jump is only the first one, and then the other ones you can just double jump between the gaps every time. And the last save actually looks quite a bit harder than it is because you got that double jump diamond thing, but it's actually surprisingly easy for some reason. I swear it's not nerfed, but it's surprisingly alright. And then that's the end of stage 5. You're already at the final boss. It's, the platform in this game is relatively short overall, it's mostly just based around the bosses. So 
yeah, you can only shoot this boss at certain points. I believe it's eight hits for the first section, the first section, then she splits into two, and there's another eight hits on each part there. You can target it a little bit because the left one is a targeted line. And then the last section is shooting the boss directly. Yeah. You can go pretty fast on the last section if you just stay at the bottom of the screen the whole time and just shoot the boss all the time. But it's also very difficult and you have to hope that the platforms are in good spots because you can't tell where they're going to spawn. Yeah, this section here can be done in a few seconds at most if you're really lucky and you just go ham on it. But it can be very hard to do that. And then we get the final part. Where you've got infinite jump and you're shooting the boss in the middle of the screen. Also the best spelling mistake in fan game history. Yoi. So the first part is spraying the, the rings that curve around as you can see here. The second part is bullets getting sucked into the middle. The third part is bullets getting sprayed out from the middle. And the fourth and final part is a combination of the sucking in and the spraying out. And while the bullets are getting sucked in or sprayed out, your gravity actually shifts depending on your position compared to the boss. So when the bullets are getting sucked in and you're in the top left, your jump is low and if it's getting sprayed out, your jump is extra high. Which really can mess with you when you're trying to get some hits in, as you can see on phase 3 for A17 here. Making it very difficult for everybody to back down. You tend to stay around the middle of the screen, just in case you need to go up fast or drop down quickly. And then for the final part, then it's just normal gravity because it's both directions at the same time. Ooh, these bullets are not being friendly to him right now, that's for sure. Not getting an opportunity to shoot. Okay, there you go. And that's the end of that! So now on to part two. So there's four circles that spawn here. I believe it's based on the Final Fantasy X fight. But I haven't played Final Fantasy X, so I don't know for sure. So the four circles have two phases each, 20 health total. Second phase starts, 10 health in. And they all have four attacks, as you can see on them. Red, yellow, blue, and purple. Whenever they finish doing an attack, they'll spin around, and then the next color that's touching the boss. So for example, if the top ring is pointing downwards, that's the color that will spawn. The left ring is the color on the right side. The yellow circle is going to spawn a lightning bolt, the blue one spawns fruits that explode into freezing, uh, red is a bunch of fruits that will explode, and purple is a bunch of purple or pink. And then when they get halfway through their health bar, they'll hit a phase 2. This is her ring thing. So you, the main focus for this first part is to try to make sure you do as much damage to the top 2 as possible. It's good if you get damage done to the bottom one, but it's not the most important thing. Because as you can see, on the phase 2 of the frost attack, it basically just covers the bottom, and you are not getting down there. So you want to try to get rid of the left side first, because that's the part that's hardest to shoot. And the top one, so that you have a way to get across the other side of the screen. And then you can start dealing with the right side circle, and the bottom. If you're really good, and by this I mean it's basically not going to be done by any person, most likely. You could actually stay in between all four, because touching the boss doesn't actually kill you. But the reason that nobody does it is because you're standing right next to where anything spawns. And that doesn't tend to end too well. Yeah, he's got the two hard ones done, so now he's going to go over to the other side, I assume, and start trying to shoot the other one. Or he's just going to deal with the bottom first. Fair enough! So yeah, now you've only got one left. 
basically when the first two circles disappear, then you got the easy part of phase one. Because it's just one guy spawning attacks. You do want to be a bit hit, a bit careful on the purple and red attacks, because those are the two that spawn out randomly, they spray out from the circle itself. And especially when they hit when the circle hits phase two and the purple starts curving, or the red one is a giant explosion, you really don't want to be close by when that comes, because otherwise you're just not gonna survive it. Because you don't know when the red fruits are going to explode either, and obviously the purple just goes wherever the heck the purple goes. Yeah, he's hit phase two, so there's 10 health left on this. And as soon as this last ring is dead, you then hit phase two or phase two, where you shoot the boss directly. And the boss has 15 health and spawns out five orbs in a ring shape every time you hit them. Star shape, that's probably a better way of phrasing it. Yeah, and then you infinite jump and try to finish off the boss. And then 15 hits in, you'll hear a break sound or something, and the boss will get an angry thing in the top right of his face. And a time will start in the top left of the screen for about 30 seconds, and all you have to do at that point is just dodge. But as you can see, the screen gets very busy very, very quickly, and it's very easy to misread things a little bit. Yeah, timer has appeared in the top left, so final 30 seconds, and time will be when that timer hits zero. Keep in mind the bullets are of course screen looping, so staying oof, staying near the edges is not the best idea, but that was something as well, wow. And that's GG, that's time there. That's Call Me It. This is a credit sequence, after the credit sequence has ended, you go to an extra room, but that's obviously not part of the any percent run, so we don't have to worry about that. Hello again, Pat. No problem. That was a good run, actually. Good job, Ace Inting. Okay, um, just to repeat what he said, it's going to take a bit longer to set up the next thing because there's four people involved in the race, but we'll be up.